and welcome back to Creme de la Creme's virtual art class with Miss Zoe. Today, we are going to reference back to our Backyard Bugs book from Circle Time. Do you remember what Edie likes to pretend to be? An entomologist, you're right. Kiss your brain, because that's a big vocab word. Edie likes to catch bugs in her backyard, but she always lets them go free at the end of the day. Bugs are living creatures, so they need to be outside. But today, in art class, we are going to make craft bugs that we can keep in our own bug house forever. So today, in order to make our bug house, you are going to need a few supplies. First, you'll need a clear plastic jar. It doesn't have to have a lid, but it does make it easier. You will need some wooden sticks, you can use popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, or real twigs from outside. You can also use pipe cleaners if you have those at home. You will need some green paper or felt. I have tissue paper and construction paper. You'll need some beads, buttons, and various other decorations. You'll need scissors. Make sure to ask an adult for help and you'll need some glue. All right, are we ready to make our bug house? First, you're going to take your jar and make sure that it is nice and clean on the inside. If you can't get all the stickers off of the outside, that's okay, there's an easy way to hide it. I am going to take some construction paper and stand it up along the back of my jar. And now it looks like there's sky instead of stickers. Next, you're going to take some green or brown, if you want it to look like there's soil, paper to put in the bottom. You can use tissue paper like I am. You can use shredded construction paper, or you could even use felt to give your bug a nice, soft place to call home. Next, your bugs are going to need some twigs and sticks so that they can climb on them and maybe even some leaves to eat. To do that, you can use some popsicle sticks or a tongue depressor, which is just a little bit bigger. Whoops. You can also go out in your backyard and find real sticks. I am going to use pipe cleaners, twisted together to make some nice yummy leaves and other plant life for my bugs to eat. This is a really good fine motor activity to help your, the muscles in your hands and fingers Stay strong and healthy. Here's my little plant. I'm gonna stick my plant right in the back by my twigs. All right, our bug house is coming together. So far we have sky, dirt, grass, twigs, and leaves for our bugs to eat and climb on. But what are we missing? You're right, the most important thing, the bugs. I'm gonna show you guys how to make two different kinds of bugs to live in your bug house. The first one is going to be a caterpillar. To make your caterpillar, first, you're going to take a piece of green construction paper and carefully Cut out a leaf shape. Remember to always ask an adult before you use scissors so that you stay safe. Here's my leaf shape. Next, I'm going to put a line of glue down my leaf. Just like that. Here's where you can get creative. You can use 
pom-poms to make your caterpillar. You can use buttons, you can use beads, you can use cotton balls, whatever you might have at home that mom or dad says that you are allowed to use as craft supplies. I'm going to use buttons. Can you tell me what shape that button is? A circle, very good. My biggest circle is going to be used to make my caterpillar's head. Then I'm going to use smaller buttons to create its body. She's going to be a very brightly colored cat. If you have wiggly eyes at home, you can add them to the big circle. How many eyes should my caterpillar have? Two, you're right. Carefully put one, two, wiggly eyes on my caterpillar. The next bug I'm going to show you how to make for your bug house is a dragonfly. To make your dragonfly, you'll need two pipe cleaners, one for its body and one for its wings. To make your dragonfly's body, you're going to take your pipe cleaner and fold it in half, just like that. It's okay if it doesn't stick together because we're going to string beads on the end to create its butt. I'm going to leave the two ends free so that my dragonfly has, do you remember what these two feelers are called? Antenna, great job with your vocab words. I'm so proud of you. Now that my dragonfly has a head, I'm going to string more beads on to make its body. I heard it. Someone said that it looks like I am making a pattern for my dragonfly's body. And you are absolutely right, I am. Can you tell me what this pattern is called? It's blue, pink, white, blue, pink, white, blue. Next comes pink. And then white. Great job. This is an A, B, C pattern. It goes A, B, C, and then repeats. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, and C. Now my dragonfly has its body, but it can't fly without wings. You're going to take your second pipe cleaner carefully snip it in half. Next, you'll fold the two ends into the middle, just like that, and twist them to keep them together. Then you can bring it over to your dragonfly's body twist it around so that it stays in place and voila now your dragonfly has wings and can fly finally you'll take your completed bugs and set them in your bug house Close on the lid. 
And now you have a bug house that you can keep and look at every time that you want to pretend to be an entomologist. And there you have it, your own craft bug house so that anytime that you want to pretend to be an entomologist like Edie, you have bugs ready and willing to be studied. I'm so glad I got to spend art class with you guys today and I'll see you next time for Creme de la Creme's virtual classes. Bye guys.